guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm gonna unbox some succulents for you. And I'm so excited because it's been such a long time since we've done this. Mountain Crest Gardens was gracious enough to send us out this box full of plants. And I honestly don't even know what's in here. So let's just get right into the box. Gotta be careful, I don't wanna cut anything. So right out the gate, it looks to be packed really well. I mean, it's packed all the way to the top of the box. So I'm excited to get beneath this and see what we've got. I'm gonna make a huge mess behind me here. Oh, they, it looks like they're all in a tray so I can lift the whole thing out. So this is what they look like in the box. I'm gonna pull out the whole tray and give them a quick brush off and then show you everything I've got. Got them all unpacked and cleaned off and it's a really good idea when you order succulents to have a really small soft brush on hand just to um, clean off any dirt that may have escaped the pot because it's really impossible to pack up succulents in a way that absolutely no soil will come out. Otherwise, I think it would damage the leaves of the succulents to do that. So I always have a brush handy. This is a lens brush. I stole from Aaron a long time ago and it's the perfect size for doing this type of job. So as I was taking them out and cleaning them, I tried to group them according to their variety. So what I wanna do is start on this side of the table and work my way around and we'll just kind of look at all of them. And the thing I like about Mountain Crest Gardens, I could spend forever on their website, is that you can order them by name and then they come with a little tag in their pot telling you exactly what kind of plant it is, which is so nice. I mean, you can order them in bulk trays and things like that if you want, but I like to know what I'm gonna get and I like to like be able to plan on what my arrangement's gonna look like or whatever I'm gonna be doing with it. So let's start with these ones. First off, we've got these Haworthias here, which this one is a zebra Haworthia, which I use a ton of in arrangements because of the white variegation on the leaves, they really shine. And this is a Haworthia mutica. There is a tag so you can see it. We'll make sure that we put the names up on the screen because I'm sure there's several of these. I don't know how to pronounce correctly, but I love the look of this. It almost looks kind of watery. I've always liked the leaves of that uh, style of Haworthia. Next we have Echeverius, which are actually 10 of them here, so I'll go through them kind of quick, but I wanted to start with the Lola here um, on my left because I really like uh, the tightness of the rosette and the icy blue color. They're always just such a fun one to use in arrangements. And then the Echeveria agavoidis, I think that's how you say it. Um, but I really like the stiff nature of this one, like the really pointy stiff leaves with the uh, kind of red tint on the tips. Echeveria purposorum and Doris Taylor, which check out those fuzzy leaves. Then we have Echeveria Sorrento and Azulita. And then two varieties of Echeveria that I do not know how to pronounce. So this one right here is an Apus, A-P-U-S, Apus. And then we've got Malaco. Last two Echeverias, we've got Ruby Blush and Imbricata. So now let's move on to the Sempervivums. So I wanna start with a couple of my favorites here. Now check this one out. This one is called Oddity, which it does look odd. Look at the shape of the leaves. They're like little tubes. I think that is so cool. And then this one almost looks like it's glowing. I think it's called Irene. Yeah, but it's super dark petals or leaves, I guess I should say. And then the little margin on the outside is almost white. So it just kind of just glows. It's so pretty. And all of these Sempervivums are hardy in my area, which is awesome. I love to get something that'll survive in a zone five. These two are really neat as well. This one looks like it has kind of like cobwebs on the top, which is cool. And then the coloring is really wonderful on this one. We've got like yellow, yellowish green. And then the outer part of the leaves have little red markings. I think that's really, really interesting. And then these right here have a lot of red, which is cool. So this one has red tips and kind of deep green on the inside. And then this one has red tips with kind of that bright green. And you guys might remember when we unboxed a big load from Chick Charms, so Chick Charms Semper Vivums, Mountain Crest actually sells those. So if you had a hard time finding them, if you were interested after that video, you can find them on Mountain Crest's website. And these right here are really pretty, actually beautiful together. The tight rosettes here. This almost looks like an Echeveria to me, this one here. This one is Minutum, Semper Vivum Minutum. Beautiful, kind of like a minty green. And then this one, I love the depth of color. Then we've got a couple of them that contrast really nicely. So this one is Sempervivum Black, actually. So this one deepens in color as it gets cooler. Usually that's when Sempervivums color up the best is the cool temper temperatures bring out that color. And this one is called uh, Sempervivum Aglow. Last two simps right here. We've got one that actually has a little baby coming off of it and beautiful red tips. And then this one's got kind of a neat look to it, kind of like a bronzy green. Now a couple of Pecavarias, which look kind of like the Echeverias here. This one is called Pecavaria Jewel Tone and Pecavaria Noel. I like the structure, the really upright kind of strong structure of these. 
couple of Senecios here, which always are fun. I mean, this one is Senecio scaposis, but it almost looks like it's perfect for Halloween. Like this is just unpacking these is giving me so many ideas, just seeing the different structures and colors. Um, so I'm gonna probably have some arrangement videos coming out here pretty quick because there's some gorgeous stuff here, but doesn't that look Halloween-esque to you? Kind of like mummy style with the kind of white, I don't even know what it's called. It probably has a technical name, but the white stuff coming off, <laughs> kind of mummy style. And then this one has really cool leaves. This is a Senecio spearhead, which definitely looks like a spear on the end. Then we have a few that are standalone. So this is a Portulacaria variegata. I use these all the time in arrangements. They get quite large, but I use them because of their variegation. They have really like uh, light yellow and white mixed into their leaves and oftentimes some pink, like their stems are really pink. Um, so they're a beautiful accent kind of filler succulent. And then this one right here is actually a, a portulaca, and I've never grown this one before, so I'm really excited about that. And the last two standalones here, this is a Ripsalis right here, which kind of looks like an under the sea type of plant to me. And then this is a Rum Rose, Rosularia, um, which I have used before, and these are really like delicate and just kind of like a really pretty miniature type succulent. Oh, that's the other thing. Like when I was looking on their website, they actually categorize their succulents really well um, to where you can shop for miniature succulents if you are doing like a really small project or a terrarium style um, thing. And it, like if you're shopping for cold hardy succulents or whatever, they've got like several different categories so you can find exactly what you need. Right here we have Graptivarias. This one's called Bashful, uh, which has that beautiful soft minty green and then the pink tips. Um, and then this one is Debbie is the name of this one. Love it. <laughs> Just Debbie straight up. <laughs> then we've got some Kalanchoe Kalancho. You guys, I am probably butchering the names of so many of these, but I have found that the pronunciation of a lot of these succulents is super regional. So if I pronounce it wrong, it's probably not wrong where I'm from. <laughs> That's my defense. So this one's called Chocolate Soldier, uh, and I love the furry leaves and the bronze color that this one has. It's really fun, especially like fall time, using this type of succulent. Uh, and this one is Aurora Borealis. That's a great name for this. It's got pink, yellowish kind of cream, and then that real pretty green in the center. Then we move on to the Crassulas. This one is Small Red Stone Crop, and that's a really nice, I will use these for uh, fillers all the time in arrangements. And then this one is Ripple Jade, which I've seen large ones of this and they're super pretty. So I'm excited to watch the, that one grow. All right. So these are a couple of favorites here. These are both Crassulas as well. This one is String of Buttons, which these are just wonderful. I love the, how they grow just on that one stalk and they get really long and nice and kind of, kind of trail-esque, like they'll kind of trail over the side a little bit, but bring a really nice upright element as well. And this one is a Crassula Spiralis, Spiralis? And I mean, they just spiral. I, they're so cool. The way the leaves grow, um, there's something kind of almost hypnotic about looking at that. And the last group here are sedums, most of which are hardy in my area. There are maybe, maybe this one isn't hardy in my area and the rest, maybe this one isn't either. I'm not sure. I'll have to look them up, but this one right here is a sedum adolfi. This one is a uh, adolfi. This one is not hardy in my area, but wonderful to use in indoor arrangements in colder climates, or if you're in a mild climate, you can grow that one outside. And this is a sedum something something variegatum. I'm not familiar with this one, so I'm really excited to plant this, uh, but I'm not sure about the zones on that one, but I think the rest of these are hardy. We've got Mercy. Sedum camp scut. Ticum variegatum floriferum wall stefaner go. I kid you not. That is what the tag says. <laughs> it's a really cool looking sedum. There's got to be a regular name for that, like a common name that I need to know it by. Um, and then we've got Chinese stone crop, which is really pretty. I love the little kind of rosettes that each end of like each stock has. Out of the whole group, Let's see. Oh man, it's hard to pick a favorite, but look at all of these three together. I just have to show you the way that the colors and the textures look together. So gorgeous. This one is a Tokyo Sun Sedum. Beautiful. We've got Tricolor Sedum, which actually I have growing out in my garden. I love that. And then I have Sedum Dasphytum. Dasphytum. 
really pretty. And these look like um, good ones for like mini fairy gardens, miniature gardens. And that brings me to the very last three of this load. We've also got some really nice color going on here. We've got a blue called blue spruce right here. This middle one's more green, it's Angelina, super hardy succulent. And then this is Ruby Mantle. All right guys, what a gorgeous load of succulents. How fun to open a box not really knowing what's in there and to see all this beautiful, fresh color and texture. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of the plants and maybe even learning the name of one or two of these that you've seen in your nursery travels and you're not sure what they're called. Um, that's always fun and that's something I so appreciate is that they come with a tag on them which it's just wonderful because not a lot of times do you get that. Um, so they're actually out, Mountain Crest is out of Northern California. We live in Eastern Oregon so they're just south of the Oregon border so it's kind of fun to get something from someone so close in the same region. They also ship year round which is super important to somebody like me who lives in a cold climate uh, because it's hard to get your hands on some of these especially cold tender succulents when it's really cold outside side um, so it's great to have a resource to get your hands on them because maybe you have like an event you're preparing for we do stuff all the time where we need something specific um, so now there's a way to get it and I could waste so much time looking at their website because there's like somewhere around like over 650 named varieties on their website and I just like pour through them and drool over all the ones that I want. So if you have a second to go check out their website, you definitely should, there's some beautiful stuff. And again, thank you so much Mountain Crest Gardens for sending these out to me, how fun. I'm so excited to use these out in the garden. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and we will see you in the next one, bye. Also, they ship with recyclable peanuts that dissolve in water and our grass is wet. So both of my shoes are covered in dissolving peanuts. It was distracting me the whole video. I could feel like my shoes growing. I was getting taller. Gah! All right, cleanup time. <laughs>